All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is January 25th, 2022, and we are back to keep digging, keep seeking and searching diligently to draw closer to the Lord as we continue to watch and pray to keep our eyes peeled for the events going on scripturally to the timing and things going on in the in the world right now. We know where we're at, right, brothers and sisters? We've been watching for a while. The scriptures, the books have opened to us. We're not we're not sitting around in a in a mystery trying to understand what's going on. We have been blessed. The Lord has chosen us, not just our ministry, but all those watching and praying as well to understand that we are in the season and time. You know, <laughs> it's it's really ramping up around the earth now, isn't it? Um, we know with all this wars and commotions going on right now regarding it, I'll touch on that briefly that we don't need to get, excuse me, we don't need to get um, stressed out about it, but just be aware that it's happening, all right? Because we know it doesn't kick off right off the bat. We know World War III isn't about to break out while the bride's here. We understand these things, right? So we're going to touch a little bit about that at the beginning. I'm going to share uh, uh, just a, <laughs> an awesome dream that uh, one of our sisters had here in Ministry Revealed. And for those who don't know, when I say when I talk about the forum or tonight, I'm going to show you uh, pictures, Im info from the forum in relation to her dream. If you guys want to join us, it's free. You can come here to ministryrevealed.com. You can come to the website right here. Um, you can also find the website in the description box under all the videos. You can find all of the charts, the graphs, the videos. Everything is available for free. The Ministry Revealed book is available for free on the website. And you can also buy it in paperback if you wanted to or in an ebook form. But you can go to the ministryrevealed.com website. And in the menu box, click on Forum and join over 900 people there in the forum sharing all sorts of things, scripture and, and news and and all sorts of events and prayers and uplifting and all sorts of things going on in there. You guys can come and join us in there. Well, I'm going to be sharing uh, 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 images from there uh, to show you uh, her, her vision or her dream, I should say, that she had. And it was so awesome because she didn't realize what it was. And for me, that makes it so much more amazing is she, she's been praying and asking for the Lord like everybody does, right? And saying, Lord, help me to understand, you know, how much closer is it? You know, uh, help me understand. And you're going to see when I show you what she had said and uh, the brief of what it was in her dream. And many of us here in this ministry, me included, when we saw it, we knew instantly what it was. And it was so exciting because it was a confirmation that it would appear we, we've understood this time. So that that the, the the time is honed in, and uh, that's what we've been watching for. We know you know it's it's a little less than five months away, and we got a bit of a trek until there, but or until then. But we're gonna keep seeking. We're gonna keep searching. We're not gonna be those that turn and start falling asleep, right? We're gonna keep our eyes peeled. Yes, yeah, sometimes it feels like it's so much easier to just go to sleep, isn't it? Doesn't it? It feels so much easier sometimes. But that's just not the way we're built. You know, we've got that spirit within. We've got that fire within us, that fire, that light that comes from the Lord by the spirit of the living God within us, by his spirit dwelling with us. So there's just no way. I mean, I don't even think you could blow it out. You would have to. I don't even know how you could do it, because once you know, I find it almost impossible to see how people who know that they know could ever walk because regardless of how difficult it gets, re regardless of how long it might seem, that's just the burden we have to bear until. It's not that big of a burden. Imagine the burden that will have to be bared if you turn. <laughs> Imagine if you have to go through seals and through the tribulation of that portion. Man, <laughs> we will keep our eyes peeled regardless. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and 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 how this scripture is going to lead us in to a piece I want to share about when Christ is coming. Okay, we're not talking about his feet down on the Mount of Olives, as you guys know. There's more than one. 
We know he's coming for 40 days at the escape. We'll briefly touch on that with some with some things I'm going to talk about about the population of the of the world. Um, uh, and then this this time when he's coming on heavenly Mount Zion, we're going to touch on some of those scriptures and, and help some people see and understand that when he comes at this time, he's coming with peace. Yeah, there's a devastation. There's a destruction that's going to take place. But then it's going to be peace with the nations. And for a lot of people, I, I've had some comments in, in re recently about, you know, where is this that, that Christ is coming and that, that, this, that there's going to be a peace when he comes at the end of seals in that seventh year to, to begin trumpets and that time of rebuilding. Okay. We're going to touch on that. We're, we're going to we're going to go into that in the later part of the video. And as we've said in the past, you know, it, it's <laughs> for anybody that's new, you're going to say, what is this guy talking about? Because as we've said in the past, you know, the Christians have always said, man, yeah, we're to pray for the Jews. But there's a whole bunch of them within the church, uh, if not all of them, for the most part, just about all that don't realize that there is christ coming in another form or in a, in another portion of time i should say for them and it sounds so crazy we know it's at the time of the rapture the great multitude the the mid-trib rapture you know, we talk and we're preparing for the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ. We're going to touch on that with uh, with some things about this eight billion and everything else. But we're gonna we're gonna go into that, and it's I, I find it so fascinating. You know, I was <laughs> I was contemplating yesterday how could I how could I piece together in one video what's been revealed in this ministry. And I started to short circuit. I, I couldn't. Uh, my brain starts to panic <laughs> because there's been so much that to, to say this here and piece here and this piece here and that piece with that and this piece and to try to put it all to, I, I can't I can't do it. I, it would take me a whole weekend of eight hours a day and just constantly talking about all of these pieces and how they all came. I mean, it's incredible, guys. It is absolutely incredible. And this is one of those things when we talk about that, when, when he comes at the end of seals and, and, and the, the revelation of it and, and how everything we thought we've been taught or that we thought we, we somewhat understood, even though most people question how could it be, excuse me, how it could be is, you know, we've all been taught that, that when seals comes about, you know, it, it's the preparation and then the temple's going to be built, and that's when Satan or the Antichrist is going to come in. They, and it's it's all because they haven't understood the Gospels and the 14 years. All right? For anybody that's new in this ministry, this is where we recommend everybody to go. The Revealed End Time Study Note Series. This intro series right here, let me mute it. This intro series right here, is they're the keys they're the keys to the ministry all right they're, they're, they're the keys to opening up scripture to opening the books this first intro video is about who the gospel speaks to who the gospels are speaking to and in the description box you can print out the six pages of this as well and you could follow along you're going to understand for the first time in your life who the gospels are speaking to and this makes all the difference in the world with scripture once you begin to understand who the gospels are speaking to in particular luke mark and matthew the synoptic gospels and then you understand that that john is the picture of everything from the beginning of creation to the end time years it is mind-boggling to understand but I and I promise you, it will be worth every moment you take to study it. Because when you do, you're going to understand that. Oh my goodness! No wonder we've understood it couldn't fit into seven years. No wonder I've had all these questions that it can't fit into seven years. 
because the truth is 14 years. In fact, there's a 40, 50 day portion first, then seven years of seals, then seven years of trumpets, and then the 50th Jubilee. You're going to say, what? I, seven was too long. What do you mean 14? Well, why would you worry about it? If you're preparing, who, what if it was 100 years? It wouldn't matter as long as there was a pre-trib, right? As long as there was a pre-trib, who cares how long it is? Except for the prayers that we're putting out for family and friends, of course, right? Well, you're going to understand that the truth is that it's seven years of seals and seven years of trumpets. You're going to understand that pre, mid, and post, the reason why everybody can defend their position on pre, mid, and post of Scripture is because they are all true. And it is so important to understand, but you cannot understand it without understanding who the Gospels are speaking to, without then understanding and receiving the understanding that, that it's 14 years and two sets of seven. That in the third video, you'll understand how it was missed because we've all been taught from the Gospel of Matthew. And this is what's so important when it comes to talking about what we're going to talk about today in, in the later portion of the video is because we say, well, it's the Jews. The Jews are going to fall for the Antichrist. And he's going to be the one that rebuilds, the, he's going to be the one that builds the third temple. And, and it's all been twisted and mashed together like mashed potatoes. To make it look like in the end, it's one nice fluffy bowl of everything, of one thing. But it's just not true. It is separate portions of time. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ, Messiah, coming at the end of seals on heavenly Mount Zion. And it is Messiah who is going to rebuild the city and the temple and the streets and so forth. He's going to be there overseeing it all. You tell that to somebody and you try to explain that to somebody with a seven-year understanding, with, with all foundational teaching coming from the Gospel of Matthew, and they're going to think you have lost your mind. I don't blame them because they haven't yet understood the revelation of the Gospels. This was the very first thing this ministry was ever given. And within the, I think within three weeks, less than a month, the 14 years opened. Because we understood who Luke, what was Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In the end, is Luke, Mark, and Matthew. There's so many fascinating things. And you realize in video three that the reason it was all missed was because we've been taught from a foundation in Matthew and taking all of the Gospels telling one story without fully understanding why there are different Gospels telling different portions of the story in different ways. And this is called the revelation of the is to come. We've been given the revelation of the open books in what is to come. And along the way, what it's done is it helps, it's helped us clarify the things that are in the are, in the is, I should say, from Christ until now, until the moment of the escape in the pre-trib. And it's brought us clarity to the was from the beginning of Genesis till the time of Christ. But what the bulk of this ministry is, what the Lord through his spirit has given us to reveal, to, to dig in and to bring about and to share with all those he brings in, is the is to come. And we're going to share a little bit more on that as well. We're going to go into pieces of scripture we haven't gone into for a little while, uh, for a long while, as, long, as well as some that we have gone into recently. But we're going to tie this all in because, you see... In, in people's seven-year understanding that's all mixed and blended up into everything, they think in some cases, one of the ways they look at it is that it's three and a half years of seals and then three and a half years of trumpets. And so after three and a half years of seals, Antichrist is there and then he's going to build, the temple's going to be rebuilt and he's going to be the one. No, he's not the one building the temple. It's going to be the, it's going to be Messiah. And this Messiah is the Messiah who the Jews have been waiting for. You ever wonder why it's such a struggle, right? Why it's so much of a struggle with, with, with uh, Jews, right? With the house of Judah compared to the house of Israel. The house of Israel is where all the Gentiles are blended in, and that's the whole world. But Judah still has their time. 
and that's why there's this there's this budding against them it's like jews the the jews are against christians just like there are muslims but they want everybody to come and visit of course right bring them their money and everything but you see it's always this budding heads are there some that come in still absolutely but it's only few remember he he he, he closed their eyes they were blinded in part and it's that little part that's coming in right now but the bulk of their portion of time is coming just as they told us it was just as their books in the old testament have declared it there was more than one portion of time remember i shared in a video not too long ago and i couldn't find i couldn't remember the video and i, I can't remember the um the the info where i where i had the clip from and you know what come to think of it i think i might i think it was a, a youtube video i can just do a search on it anyways and what it was is that the jews are waiting for this conquering king to show up this melchizedek king and high priest who is going to be a defeating who's, who's going to defeat the enemy who's going to who's going to bring peace and rebuild the temple and if you ask most Christians outside of this ministry, probably everybody outside of this ministry, what or who they think that is, the majority of people that study end times will say, well, that's because the Jews are going to fall for the Antichrist. It is 100% not true. It is when the Messiah is coming in the clouds at the end of seals. And I'm going to show you more of that and break that down more clearly for you with Scripture. All right. So let's get started here in this piece first. So I wanted to share just a little bit. You see, I know obviously there's there's all this talk with Russia and Ukraine. And we see what's going on with the Americans and, and Canadians. You know, Canadians and the Brits are sending weapons. And, you know, it's obviously a buildup, okay? But for us in Ministry Revealed, we have the Gospels, guys. We know who they're speaking to, and I know most of you know this. But you see, we know the season and time we're in. We know that it's, it's not too far off. It's not too far off to, to get to June and then, you know, into August before all this real craziness really, really kicks off. But you say, come on, five more months almost before Russia and Ukraine may do something? No, that's not exactly what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it may just continue to build up. But what does it represent scripturally? It represents this right here. Because we know where we're at. We're in the 70th. And being in the 70th, it means that we know when this plays out in relation to luke's discourse and so first of all there's absolutely nothing for us to be fearful about for those that are worried that are seeing a lot of posts and news and everything about what's going on over there we don't need to be fearful but of course we've got brothers and sisters and family and friends that are maybe living in those areas okay but in in a big picture what i'm talking about for the world it's not going to be World War III, guys, while the bride is still here. I want you guys to remember that. Let's not be terrified, you see? It's Luke 21, verse 9. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. These things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Okay? This is where this is not World War Three. This is not Jerusalem destroyed, encompassed, and then attacked. It's the buildup. All right. It's the preparations, I would say, just like we're seeing right now. It's these preparations. It's this play that's coming. But do not forget, guys, the bride of Christ will escape first. The Son of Man will be here for 40 days doing signs and wonders. And people will be saying, no, it's the Antichrist. No, it's, it's the Dajjal. And the Christians will side with the Muslims 
to say it's the Antichrist. And if any of us from Ministry Revealed are here chosen as workers, we will be declaring to the world, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's the Son of Man. Right? Guys, the escape still is coming. The 40 days of the Son of Man is coming. Jerusalem, after having been compassed, will then be destroyed. Then, not too, too long after, late this year into the fall of this year, maybe not even till the spring of 2023, but probably later this year, that would then begin World War III. You see, if you guys remember this too, remember this video, I talk about it a lot. I received the video, the, I received this video about 12 hours before COVID was declared and, and, the, and the global shutdown of pandemic started. And this video spoke about that. You guys know China catching a cold and it would spread to the world. And this video came out in 2010. How did he know this? He, he met with a guy who was in a room while these conversations were being had that they would release a flu-like virus on China, that it would mutate, or that China was going to launch a counter virus that would spread to the world. He didn't know which it would be. It would spread to the world, and it would become a global pandemic, and nations would be in lockdown with types of martial law. Guys, this video is from 2010. And the guy he spoke to was in that room in 2005. But do you know what else they said? And I'm bringing this up for a reason, not just to reiterate it, but I'm bringing it up for a reason in, in parts that we're going to go into in a moment. And the next thing he says is that it would start first with Jerusalem being attacked. It would be Jerusalem and Iran. It would be a short tactical nuke attack. The world would be in panic and then it would be the global pandemic. And we stated, I've stated, that all that happened was they released the global pandemic first. They released the attack against China first, which then spread to the whole world. It was purposed. But you know what it wasn't? It wasn't as deadly as they had hoped. One thing you guys have to understand is as he's talking in this video and he was, he's reiterating what he had had with the conversation with the guy, is that they didn't they weren't planning these things when he was in that meeting with them in 2005 they already had these plans made and they were seeing what point they were at trying to get them to happen you see they can't be the they're not the ones pushing the buttons and making the nukes go and doing all these things they're making things ripe to make those things happen but of course it would be all in god's timing you're going to see why I'm getting into this. It's pretty wild what I'm going to show you because it's related to movies and shows. And I'm, it's not, this isn't something we do often, but I'm going to show you some pretty wild stuff. Okay. And so what do we know that was planned? There was going to be a flu-like virus against China. It would spread to the world. It would be a global pandemic and lockdown. Uh, Israel and Iran would be a short nuclear war. The world will freak out. And then he says, right near the end, and then, as scary as all that sounds, he says, and then it will be what you could declare as, or what people would call, World War III with a much larger nuclear devastation and everything else. And he goes on to say, and this is the part where I usually don't talk about it, is that their plan and their goal in all of this is depopulation. And you say, what? What is depop? What do you mean depopulation? That's the way I used to look at it. Ah, depopulation. Oh, we always hear that's the plan of the elites and everything else. Well, you know what? I'm going to show you some things. And you're going to understand that, that when this virus was released, they expected tens of millions of people to die from it. You got to remember, this was from 2010. And the guy was in the room with them in 2005 when this was being discussed about how come they, you know, where are they in being able to make these things happen? So this was decades. And they still couldn't make these things happen. 
So instead of waiting to be able to get Israel and Iran to go at it, they launched the virus first. Do you understand the timing of all of this? Knowing where we are in this ministry, knowing where the world is in relation to the timing of the end of days, there was no way the Lord God was going to allow a much deadlier virus to be launched years in advance to kill tens of millions of more people. He was not going to allow World War III to break out that would kill tens or hundreds of millions of more people. Do you know why? Because it's a number. It is a number. And I've been telling you guys this for almost four years when I realized it. Just as the Bible is a countdown, just as it's on a clock, so are the number of people that must be on the earth. I've told you guys this before. I, the, the elites and what they're trying to do was to slow down the population of the world. If they can reduce drastically the population of the world within a short period of time, they know that they will then have more time. This is what they've been doing for centuries and centuries and centuries. You're going to see a really cool connection to all of this in relation to a movie that I watched to see what was in it. The movie, I thought the movie sucked, but I watched it because I knew there was going to be something in it. And when I heard it, I just about died. I showed my wife and she just looked at me and she says, are you kidding me? Guys, how many, how many ministries on earth, how many ministries have you heard of ever tell you that there is a number of people that will be alive on the earth at the moment of the escape? And that specific number is the number that must be reached. And when that number is reached, bang, the escape will happen. And when it happens, it will be right on time for the whole beginning of all of this tribulation period. I've told you guys before, I believe, as I read uh, in study, that it was 7 to 11 billion people that was believed at the time of the flood. I believe it was absolutely 8 billion exactly at the time of the flood. And I believe it will be 8 billion during the millennial reign. They'll be starting with however many people are left, and they'll be living hundreds of years again. And during the millennial reign, it'll be 8 billion again by the time it's over. Which means in this por portion of time that we're in right now, there must be the number 8 billion people reached before the escape can happen. And when I saw this in the movie, when I heard what he said, I, I, I couldn't believe it. And it all started to make even more sense. And so I'm, I'm going to show you these three movies and series that we've talked about in the past just briefly to make a point on this stuff as well. All right. And that is, watch this. Right here. The movie, The Eternals. Okay, I'm not promoting. I don't care. You guys want to watch it, watch it. You don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Okay, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. It sucked. But what had happened was this character right here is the quote unquote, he's like the Lord God, the father. Okay, he's God. And he seeds, he, he seeded all of these planets like Earth all around the universe. And sorry, this is going to be uh, for anybody that wants to watch it. You're going to get a chunk of, of what this is all about. So you can always click to, to going past this, but you might want to hear it because he says um, when she supposedly dies off, the Asian girl in green takes over and she doesn't know how to meet with him because he's God. He's out in the universe. All right. At, at the end, it's pretty cool, too, because he parts the clouds and he takes them out for what they've done. But anyways, what you find out is that him who is the Lord God, the father type character. In, in biblical understanding, as we would look at it, I know whether they twist or remember it's a movie, all right? We get that. But it's what was said that just floored me. She finally figures out how to settle herself down and go meet with them. And when she goes to meet with them, she's like this little speck, right? So she's like a little speck in compared to him. And he's talking to her. 
and she finds out that their job as the Eternals, when they were defeating all of the bad characters called the Deviants, the Deviants had been killing people all throughout history. They'd been attacking people and killing people all around the earth. And they, it was even included to the time of Nebuchadnezzar, okay, in that time of uh, Babylon, like we were talking about in the last video. So right to this time of Babylon and all the blue and everything else, right? You're going to actually see that in the movie. I don't know if it's here or not. But you're going to see this part when, when he's talking with her, he, you see the images being shown and it shows ancient Babylon and the blue stone and everything else and how these deviants were going in. And it was all of these wars that kept the population down throughout the millennia. Well, these guys that had been there now for 7,000 years, these guys called the Eternals were there to defeat and keep fighting back these deviants. Well, when they finally defeated them, they also were, you know, they're like the fallen angels, got to remember. Because the typology is they'd been teaching humans things throughout the, throughout the millennia. And this guy, the Asian guy, was teaching them technology and they were being taught weapons and, and war through this technology. And you see that shown in part of the video. Well, in part of the movie, I mean. So what you find out is as she's talking with the God character, she finds out that their purpose in defeating these, the, 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 uh, the, the enemy ones, the, those creatures, the deviants, that by defeating them, the population of the world could grow now at this exponential rate. It could begin to pick up and pick up and pick up, okay? Till it reached a point, he tells her, that we're now at the point where the population, the energy from the population of the earth has now been reached that the end can begin <laughs> and i said what i have never heard this anywhere in my life guys except here in this ministry that the end of days will be perfectly timed to the eight billion because when it's all over it will have been eight billion alive eight billion alive eight billion alive at the time of the flood at the beginning of the end of days and at the end of the millennial reign It'll have been 8 billion, 8 billion, 8 billion, because that is Christ. It is perfect. You know why? Because it's threes, my brothers and sisters. It is the Spirit, the Son, and the Father. Okay? It is the three, the three, what is it? The three-third thrice of the last video. What is three-third thrice? It's three, six, nine. It's the key to the universe, according to, to Tesla. If you can, you want a, a key to the universe, he said, understand the power of 369. The last video being called Three Third Thrice was about a key to the universe, which is 333 three, three, or 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 369. <laughs> it freaked me out. Well, what ends up happening is. <clears throat> When he says that it's a number reached, I couldn't believe it because that's what we've been talking about in this ministry for close to four years. That this number of 8 billion that will be reached is the equivalent of when I said that it was like, what, um, uh, 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 about 2%. Remember we did a video, uh, again, probably close to three years ago, and it was with Bob Jones and when he was in heaven. And he said in his line going into heaven, it was about 2% of those that had passed in the instant that he had passed. And it was about 98% going down. And then there was the little girl. She said it was like 3 to 5%, but more like 3 to 3%. 3 I didn't, I understood this, guys, from scripture. That if thousands of thousands wasn't thousands times thousands but thousands of thousands if it was times thousands then that would be a million so what do we have in scripture relating to a group of people that's thousands of thousands we have the 144,000 
And then with that group, we're also told that there's 10,000 times 10,000. This is why the King James is so important. 10,000 times 10,000. Well, 10,000 times 10,000 is 100 million. Well, if thousands of thousands related to the 144,000, then I assumed that 10,000 times 10,000 being 100 million would relate to 144 million. And I remembered when I started to understand this, and I understood that this was the pre-trib group, and that if it was 144 million people that were about to vanish in the pre-trib as the bride of Christ, I said, well, it's got to be about 2% of the population of the earth. Well, back then when we were looking, it was what, 7.7, 7.8, something like that. And as I was looking through this and understanding this portion of time, this was always in the back of my head for the last few years, that we weren't yet close to 8 billion. But I always said, because it's true, as much as the 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 world count and the and the world agencies that that count these things that that account for all the people we know it's not precise to the day but we know it's relatively close but i was always saying to myself no no we gotta it's got to be you know quite a bit off it could be 100 million off it could be 200 million off it's not going to be that far off guys you see it's not going to be that far off at all we just now know that it's close to 8 billion. Now they say, as we said in the previous video, that by late 2022 into early 2023, it'll reach 8 billion people. Now, again, it hasn't fully accounted for what happened in 2021 with the lockdowns, which caused many, many more births. Hence, we are looking at the Feast of First Fruits as the time of the escape. But what's interesting is they tell us that 8 billion people will most likely be reached at the end of 2022 to within the first months of 2023. So I keep hoping and saying to myself, oh man, I hope there was a real big chunk in 2021 that that were born that they haven't all understood yet that will bump it up a little bit faster into june because this would otherwise mean this would otherwise mean what uh, the hanukkah count right hanukkah hanukkah and and the feast of weeks are the only two counts that we ever look at anymore moving forward in this ministry we understand that there's a 50 days that comes first we understand all these things connected to it so now here we are I wasn't looking at 8 billion. I mean, when it was 7.7 .7 and I was understanding these things a few years ago and talking to you guys about it, I was trying to justify, but guess what? In the back of our minds, in the back of my mind, I knew it still had to be 8 billion people. But I just, I didn't put focus on it because for one, we can't understand it exactly. And for two, I just thought, ah, they're way off in the numbers. Well, apparently they're not way off in the numbers because we're still here and 8 billion is at our doorstep. And you see, and when I understood this years ago and I was doing, you know, I was doing like 2.1%, 2%, 1.9. And I said, well, wait a second. It's believed 7 to 11 billion in, at the time of the flood. And we know that Christ is 888. And if... 10,000 times 10,000 is the is the typology on the greater scale of thousands of thousands. I said, well, what if I take 1.8, whoops. If I go times, so 8 billion times 1.8% equals, and I freaked out. It was exactly 144 million people. So we have a, a movie here that's telling us it's a number that would be reached and that these guys, by defeating the bad guys, the, the, the deviants, they help the population to speed up its growth 
so that it could reach the point when the end would begin. And then they rebelled against that and thought he was mean. So it's them coming against God and rebelling against God and thinking that he's mean, that he's going to destroy the 8 billion people on the earth now or, you know, whatever it was in the movie, but rebuild, kill all these people so that this new creation and the next many more billions more could come from it. I was like, what? This is insane. It's the numbers we've been talking about and that I've been showing in this ministry for a while. Well, if you remember, now we've got a, a can, account that's a, a, a movie that tells us it's based on a number of people for the energy of the earth. And then if you remember, we talked about The Leftovers a while ago. The movie The Leftovers, when it's, it's about the quote-unquote rapture, but what happens? You see like about 30 minutes in, after this, this vanishing had taken place, the pre-trib will call it, because it wasn't the rapture. The rapture is going to be a great multitude. The pre-trib is the 10,000 times 10,000. It is the 144 million I've been talking about, and guess what? This movie, or this series, when you watch the first episode, it talks about 140-some million people that have vanished really isn't too big of a deal. We can settle ourselves. We can still carry on because it was what? He says, because it was only about 2% of the population of the earth. What? Is it, this, is it that these people know, or is it the spirit in them putting these things out? These are the things we've been teaching in this ministry. It was freaky. Well, let's not forget the other one, the Messiah series. <laughs> because remember what happened with the Messiah series. The whole world that, that watched it was freaking out on the Christian side and on the Muslim side. Right? And that's what they were trying to do with this. They knew it was the Messiah when they made the show, but they made it a twisted, mm, who is it? So that the Muslims were questioning and the Muslims started calling, no, this is the Dajjal. This is the Antichrist. Hey, Christians, this isn't your Messiah. This is the Antichrist. And the Christians were saying, yes, this is the Antichrist. We here in this ministry revealed that this was actually the Son of Man coming for his 40 days, the beginning of it all. And you know what was crazy? Do you guys remember this? This is the circuit of the sun, right? This is the year's end and the beginning of the circuit of the sun. So from the end of the circuit of the sun to the start of the circuit of the sun was called what? The year's end. The year's end and the beginning of the circuit. Okay, <laughs> we taught on this, right? We understand this. And so why does this matter? Because this would be the beginning of the year, right? Remember, if we go to Psalms 19, we showed that it's Psalms 19. It's the son of man, the bridegroom coming out of his chamber, ready to run a race. His going forth is from one end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends thereof was what? The revolution, the course of the sun. And we showed what this all meant in, in the timing. This is the, re, this is the typology here of the son of man here for 40 days. And there was this show with the Messiah, who everybody is screaming is the Antichrist. And we're saying, no, it really was the Messiah because we know here in this ministry that he comes for 40 days before the 14 years begins, and he comes what? At the start of the year, at the start of the circuit of the sun. Look at when they release the move. Look at when they release the series. The start of the year. Do you see the typology? It's not the start of the circuit of the sun, but it was the start of the year, according to the Gregorian. When is he actually going to come? At the start of the year with the circuit of the sun. What? <laughs> so we have the Son of Man coming for 40 days, but before he comes, 
there's going to be a vanishing of about 2% of the population of the earth, which is the 144 million people that's going to take place in relation to Psalms 18 slash 118. If you remember the, if you remember our, the chart, see Psalms 18 or Psalms 118 is connected to this, to this time of the escape and this beginning portion of time taking place. And it's all going to begin what? When the population hits 8 billion people just like this show is telling us <laughs> it was wild it's wild to put it together guys do you understand what was happening i'm going to explain to you why i'm bringing this up because just like that movie within eternals the population had remained low 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 throughout all the centuries all the centuries all the centuries until after world war ii Boom! And do you know why? Because wars, especially the ancient days, right? Or the even the, the centuries earlier, there was so much war, right? From the Khan to, to Babylon to the Northern Europe. I mean, right? The Vikings, the, the America, it, everywhere. It was war, 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 war. just continuous so the population was always remaining low and this is why i'm telling you this because the elites and their plans and their plans that they were working on to bring about this virus to bring about world war three that they had hoped would happen years and years earlier were held off or staved off in the Lord's purpose and will because it's no longer this time anymore. It was about pushing forward to get to the point where the population would reach the 8 billion necessary. And do you know how it happened? It all happened right around after World War II. Why? Because just like this Asian guy here, who was about weapons and, and through technology, it was technology and through nukes that when they saw it happen in Japan, everybody took a step back. So what they thought they were doing to protect and allow mankind to develop by giving them technology didn't actually turn out protecting them to, to bring about more war, it brought about a period of time of peace. This is why they haven't been able to do their World War III yet. Because the technology given by the enemy in the spirit realm to, to allow these guys to do these things has prevented all-out war because after World War II, through war and through economy or, or through technology and, and, and arms uh, with nuclear weapons and through prosperity, nobody wanted to do these fightings anymore. Nobody wanted to go to the extent anymore because the next one would be the big one. And so what ended up happening is just like giving them the technology, it didn't cause them to do more wars it caused them to bring about more peace for an extended period of time that ended up growing the population of the world to a size in a way and in a speed that had never been seen before. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Oh, do you see what, do you see what's being given? Do you see what's being shown? His plan was obviously going to supersede the enemy's plan of bringing about all of these things. And in what they thought was going to help bring about greater devastation and destruction before a number being reached. That would then give them more time as it has through centuries and centuries and millenniums past. This time they couldn't do it on time. And we know it. We know it because of the timing. 
we know everything is also on a clock from the fall of adam to christ's death and resurrection to his return feet down on the mount of olives is six thousand years six thousand years will be complete and we've revealed it here in this ministry that when it begins it'll be seven of seals and then six of trumpets to when he returns feet down on the mount of olives when the whole world will see him from one end unto the other and he will destroy all the enemies that came against jerusalem in that 14th year in that final year and when it's all over it'll be the beginning of the millennial reign the beginning of the the jubilee the, it, that was the millennial reign will begin with the jubilee when they will all receive their land and this is all happening as we speak the population of the earth is nearing eight billion people the precise number we've been saying it has to reach that the about two percent of the population of the earth that will be in my belief in what i've understood 144 million people will also be what 10 percent of the church which means the church will be truly at about a 1.44 billion people not this maple leaf number that they're throwing out there in the church to try to keep up with what the muslims are saying of 2.2 and 2 billion and 2.1 billion nope it'll be about a little less than 1.5 billion people and how can we know that how, how is it possible to even begin to understand that <laughs> because we are in the Laodicean age. We're in the Laodicean age. Once the tribulation begins, once the escape happens, and the 50 days begin before the 14 years start, that's a different story. It'll restart the ages of the churches, the, the book of Revelation, one, chapter 2 and 3, with the churches. But as long as we still haven't yet escaped and the tribulation start hasn't started, we are in the Laodicean age where it is the falling away. As much as there are glimpses of revival, <coughs> the actual revival, as we have taught on so many times, will not begin until the tribulation starts <laughs> so do you see while the church says this and the muslims are saying that and they're trying to compete on numbers we can understand what the truth is we can discern through the through the use of scripture and through the period of time and and in the books that have been opened that the truth is going to be about 1.8% of the population of the earth, which is about 2%, like they've all said, from Bob Jones going to heaven to a series that even said it. You see what I'm saying? And we're nearing it right now? Guys, World War III will not start while we're here <clears throat> and so what the enemy has been trying to do but it's been held off and the lord won't allow it to take place yet is because when it happens this time it will be the end of days what they think will then be taking place with world war three when it takes off and they think it's for their own purposes it will all be part of the lord god's plan for the time because this depopulation that they want and that he goes on to talk about after about 17 minutes it was always their plan it's been their plan for thousands of years to keep the population down it was always a depopulation think of abortion brothers and sisters you see if uh, if they didn't if they weren't victorious with abortion it would have happened earlier 
So the Lord willed it. The Lord, the Lord, I shouldn't say willed it, but he knew it was already part of his plan. But they were using it to keep that population down, to keep the global population down, to prevent and to slow, to stave off it reaching the number when it would no longer matter to them because bang, it was God's time. You see how crazy that is? Do you see why Christians are against, or another reason why Christians are against abortion? And we stand for life and all that, of course. But on the enemy side, what was it for? Population reduction. The population reduction wasn't about always making this slave world and everything else. It was about keeping it down so that their time of reign and control over the earth could continue. But in God's perfect timing, the 8 billion will be reached. The vanishing of 1.8% will take place. And then when the chaos breaks out, and then when World War III takes place, when the Antichrist steps on the scene and even more chaos and destruction comes, it won't be for their purposes. It won't be for them to say, oh, we've been able to keep the reduction. We've been able to keep it down. No, it won't matter. Because now the end has been released. The end of days will have started. And the destruction and the death and everything that's diminishing the population will not be because it was there wanting to stop it anymore, but it was God's release of the end of days. Let that sink into your thinking for a little bit. Ponder what I was just sharing with you. This is awesome, deep stuff, man. And it is right there. It's all being shown to us. <laughs> I, I discern these things, guys, through Scripture over the last few years. And we can see it now in shows being, being put right in front of us for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear it. Okay? There's the sun. So if, if the sun who's coming represents a time of 19, and we know then that the escape is related to 18, that this is most likely part of what we might see as Luke 21, verse 25 through 28, right? Men's hearts failing them for fear of looking after these things coming upon the earth, right? The Lord is coming. He said he's, he's going to bow the heavens and come down and make darkness that was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. He did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of sky. At the brightness that was before him, the thick clouds passed, hailstones, coals of fire. The channels, right? The earth being separated at some, port, some point. People freaking out. But we know at this point, this is probably going to relate, as we said, to the bow, the cloud being seen. And lifting, lifting up our heads for a redemption is at hand. And it's what? We know that it relates to Psalms 18 and, as I shared earlier, Psalms 118 in the open books. Watch this. Look at how it says in Psalms 18. Where is it? Let's start right here. In my distress, Psalms 18, verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came to uh, came before him, even unto his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. Watch this. Go down to the bottom when he takes them out. Verse 19. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to the right, according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. 
We've showed and explained and broken this down in a number of videos in the past, right? Reward like Enoch, cleanness is this purity and whiteness, which, which has to do with the bride of Christ and the hands of power, not the hands of the palm, which relates to Psalms 124, which is the time, or, or Psalms 24, that relates to the time of the rapture and who can go up the mountain of the Lord, because that's when he comes at the end of seals. But did you see? It says, he set me forth also into a large place. And it starts with, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. So it starts with, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. And all this craziness is breaking out. And then he comes and he sets me in a large place. Watch this. You go to Psalms 118 and look at what we get. Let Israel now say, who's Israel, brothers and sisters? Who's Israel? The world, the Gentiles grafted in with the house of Israel. And then it says, let the house of Aaron now say. And you say, wait a second, in the house of Aaron, that would be the Levites, right? Which means the house of Israel, <laughs> which is the world, which is when the great multitude rapture will happen later. It's saying, let them now. Okay. But who's there with them? The 144,000. The Levites are still on the earth as well. And do you know what this relates to? Check this out. It relates to, of course, Revelation chapter 7. What do we have? The 144,000, right? Don't let the don't let the first four trumpets take place. Don't hold them back until we seal the servants of God in their foreheads. And then what do you have? Then it goes to the great multitude rapture. This is what? The world. This is the house of Israel. This is the Gentiles grafted in with the house of Israel. And these are the Levites from the tribes that are then going to work, help bring in these guys, and then, of course, work trumpets. That's what this is saying. In Psalms 118, which means these two groups were there and would remain because now it's their time. Let them now say. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endures forever. Now, remember what Psalms, 1, uh, Psalms 18 said? It started with, I called upon the Lord in distress. And by verse, what, 19, I think it was, it said, and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. You see the relation. Psalms 18 to Psalms 118. And this one goes on to say, the Lord is on my side, I will not fear. See, it's talking about even just like Psalms 18. All nations compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They compassed me about. Uh, verse 12, they compassed me about. And then look what happens at verse 14 and 15. The Lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation. Is become my Yeshua. Is become my victory and deliverance. The voice of rejoicing and salvation, there it is again, is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. You see what's going on here? Look at verse 20. This gate, that's the open, a door, portal of the Lord in which the righteous shall enter. He, uh, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. He has become our victory. The headstone which the builders refused is become the head. What's the head, brothers and sisters? The bull, the ox, right? The beginning is become the headstone of the corner. Why do you, what do you, what do you think's going on here? This is him. The, the victory has been taken out. The bride portion is removed. 
and at the beginning of tribulation is about to start. 18, 118, and then 19, 119. Well, do you know what? This was shared in the forum. Check this out. I'm sure many of you guys have studied some of this in the past, but do you realize that the chapter before 118 is chapter 117, which is what? The shortest chapter in the Bible. And Psalms 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. Do you know what that makes Psalms 118? The middle. It is the middle chapter of the entire Bible. Check this out. It's the middle chapter of the entire Bible. Psalm 7, 117 is the shortest. Psalms 118 is the biggest. 594 before, 590, 594 after of Psalms 118. Then they go on to say, and the Psalms 1188, uh, if you add up all the chapters except Psalms 118, you get a total of 1188 chapters. So 1188 or Psalms 118 verse 8 is the middle verse of the entire Bible. And guess what? What did they add? It equals 8. See, 1188. So Psalms 118 verse 8. And what what is the 8? It's almost like what we're talking about. Boom! At the point that the 8 billion is reached. In Psalms, the period of time of Psalms 118 or Psalms 18, which is the equivalent. And look at what it says. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. 118, 8, and look at this. The middle of this chapter is between verse 14 and 15. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. This portion right here is the middle of the entire Bible, which is in direct relation to the time of the escape at the point of 8 billion. And Psalms 118 is in direct correlation to Psalms 18. And what is the number that I just told you of the 8 billion was? 1.8% of the population of the earth. 18. 1, 8. This is crazy stuff. <laughs> this is just wild, guys. It is so much fun. It is so exciting. And you, you understand why it just makes it so much more exciting for us now? Because this is where we're at. You know, I understand to the world, they would say, ah, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just crazy. I, I promise you, I'm not crazy. I promise you, the revelation of the open books, the revelation of the gospels, the years, it's understood. It continues and continues and continues to reveal itself. And to prove upon the, the, the points and the, the portions that were revealed three, four, almost five years ago now, four and a half years ago. And we're now actually literally coming to that period of time. Seeing the plans of the enemies delayed and delayed and delayed to get us to this point. So that the Lord's time would begin to bring it all about. Man, I'll tell you what, it is wild. It is so crazy, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> just it just has me just shake my head and hold my head with my hands sometimes and just say oh what's going on <laughs> it's awesome let me show you something else i was going to show you guys this in the last video and um uh, i meant to add this in the last one but check this out okay we showed uh that in the hebrew calendar so we know that june 14th okay Sixth month, 14th day, is the 15th of Sivan, which is the true Feast of Weeks. This is the beginning right here. So this is the Feast of Weeks right here. 
and then the 50 days of the beginning of the end of days begins. It will be 50 days followed by the 14 years, and then it'll be the 50th Jubilee. That's what we've shown. That's what we've explained on this. There's a seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets, and then the Jubilee. Yes, it says 15, or it could be 22 is the big picture, but it's the seven, seven, sevens of years have already passed. This is the fifth one that we're in. When those 50 days are over, boom, it's the 14 and 14. These are the last two of the five, uh, of the seven in a Jubilee cycle. And that is the final Jubilee and the millennial reign. Now, in all of this, we showed that, okay, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bang. The years end. Just like the scripture said. This is what we've been looking to understand at the year's end. So what is this? This is the seventh day. So we still are trying and, and don't have the, the perfect clarity yet in relation to does the bride go on day one or does the bride go after seven days? Okay, we read a lot of portions that relate to us that it would seem it's after seven days, meaning the Lord, when he comes or just before he comes, the bride is taken, she's taken up, and then the Lord begins his 40 days on the same day. All right, but we read other scriptures, as we said, that seem to say he's gone to a wedding and then returns after seven, which is on the eighth day. So some may seem obvious, but when you read them in other areas, it's not so obvious. All right. They'll, it'll be obvious for this one and other times it'll be obvious for this one. So, but what I wanted to share with you guys here was Savan is the third month of the Hebrew calendar and it's the 22nd day. And I thought, well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because we know skull and bones is also 322. How about that? I thought that was really interesting. Because skull and bones being 322, knowing that they're part of what? They're part of the enemy. They're, they're part of the, the elite and all that stuff behind the scenes. Doesn't mean everybody within it is, right? But those in the upper echelons, of course. So it's interesting that this was 322. Now, I believe they run it more so off of the, off of the Gregorian calendar. But it may have some sort of secret within being the Hebrew calendar. And look at where it is this year. It's at the year's end. The, the beginning of the end of all of it. I thought that was really interesting. Because you know what else is interesting? You got to understand there's different ways to look at this. There's, there's, I should say many different. There are two ways of looking at this. You can say it's the third month, 22nd day, but you're in the third month. So in one case, it could be the timing of skull and bones because of this, this period of the end of days beginning. But we also know that this is the period of time of what? That there's a group of people that have the, the flame, right? That have the light of the Lord within them. A group of people that are the sons of God, the children of God that will be co-heirs with Christ, that have the light within, that are about to be taken out to be gone. Right? To go be with the in the third heaven. Well, if you look at it, this is the end of the second month of the Hebrew calendar. Yes, it's the start of the third month right here, but what's complete? Two months are complete. So it would be two months complete. So it would be 222. If you came to the end of Savan, it would be now three months complete, and it would be three and one. Okay, so what do we have here? We would have then two complete and 22 days. It would be two 22. And for us, that's pretty interesting as well because two 22, if we go to the Hebrew, we've shared on this. And for me, it's it's important because it's it's been in my life since I was, I recognized it when I was about 10 or so years old. And it's just popped up in my life continuously. And not even aware, not knowing what it was. I never looked at it. I mean, most of the times it was before I there was even internet, right? Before the, the late 90s time. And then, of course, 
to top it all off, my firstborn, my son, whose name is Ocean, um, was born on February 22nd. He was born on 222. And so it was always interesting. When he was born on that day, it was just another one of those things. I said, man, it's it still keeps coming up, right? Well, we came to find out that it relates to what? The flame of God. The flame of God comes from 217, which has to do with the east and the light rising from the east, which comes from 215, which is to make luminous, glorious, right? To shine, to be on fire, right? To set on fire, the good fire, the fire of the spirit within. And why does this matter to us? Why, why is this significant within the timing? Because 222, to, th to this entire timing, this year 222 falls on the year's end. And the year's end is the seventh going into the eighth day, which is when the Lord comes and he chooses a group of workers at a point that I believe also the main escape group is removed. You want to see why it matters? Because of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning. So in Christ, God created. Let me show you something about that. Oh, let me see if I can remember it. Uh, is it Ephesians 2? Oh, I had it, but I did a reset on my computer. Ephesians 5. I might have to see it for another time. Uh, oh, one of those ones, I just, I lost my train of thought of where it was. Okay, that's all right. So it was a good one, though, just in relation to Christ. <laughs> Remember, God created all things through Christ. All right? So in the beginning, this, of course, means Jesus. This is the first fruits. This is the first fruits from the Feast of First Fruits. This is Christ. So in Christ, God created. We've talked about that in the past, right? <clears throat> There's more scripture in the New Testament that proves it as well. Then it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This is what's called this gap creation. There was a creation that took place before the days began. And we can prove this. We prove this in many ways. <clears throat> it relates to the last video with the three-third thrice. Because this was the spirit portion. Then, see, Christ was the beginning of it. And then Christ was the beginning of the second portion, which was the beginning of days. Okay? And it's when he became light. And then, of course, you got the other portion, which relates to when it was flesh. All right? So the reason why I'm bringing it up here is, <clears throat> first of all, when you get to verse 3, which is this beginning of this second group creation, if you will, we see that God said, let there be light, and there was light. We know that this light is Christ. Well, we were just sharing how the other one was 222 related to Uriel, and the flame of God, <coughs> excuse me, which brought us to 217 as rising from the east, the light, right? The flame of the Lord and brought us to 215, which is glorious, shine, luminous as what? As the sons of God that have the spirit of God in them. But who are they related to? Well, they're related to the light. Look at what the light is. Christ is this light, brothers and sisters. And this light, which is Christ, the sun, the morning, happiness, illumination, bright, clear, comes from 215, the same light that is the 222. It's pretty wild stuff. <clears throat> and why it's even more important is it's not just, oh, we're picking out a number of 222 and because Alan had it all his life, oh, it's a big deal. No. It's connected to those with the Spirit of God. Who are those that have the Spirit of God, but those who have the light of Christ in them? Right? <clears throat> Excuse me. We know it 
<coughs> from Romans chapter, was it? Oh, I think it was eight. We talked about it from Romans chapter eight recently, right? Listen to what it says. It's crystal clear. Starting in verse, uh, Romans 8, verse starting in verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was in that first group creation, in that spirit realm creation, that Christ was the beginning of, and the Spirit of God was there. It's only mentioned, the Spirit of God is only mentioned there, and not again until I think chapter 40 of Genesis. So who, who is this group? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, the Father, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with them, that we may be also glorified together. As we said before, that's why, that's why we experience this life on earth. It's to shine the light, right? To be that light that Christ was. He was the greatest of all the lights. Just like John. John wasn't that light, but he was to be witness to that light. All right? That's the second group. But it's the first group that's a part of it that gets taken out before the second group begins. And who is the first group? Those that have the Spirit of God, who are the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? They're the bride of Christ. They're the bride of Christ, though. 1.8% sons of God, bride of Christ. Those who have the light in them, who will be joint heirs with Christ. Well, isn't it fitting then that to be a joint heir with Christ, which means we have his light within us because his spirit that bears witness with us, that those like a 222 that relate to 217 and the flame from the east and comes to 215 are joint heirs because Christ, who is the light, which is 216 light, comes from the same base of 215. You see how the joint air thing works? He is that greater light, but we are joint heirs with them, with that light, which is 215. Wild stuff. Wild, wild stuff. And it just so happens that this is the portion of time in all of the years, in all of the portions of time, that this year it equals the year's end. Come on. You can't keep making this stuff up and have it always land in the right spot, guys. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. It just continues and continues and continues to reveal itself. It's so exciting. All right? We showed who they were already. Psalms 118. Oh, now here's a fun one. As we continue going forward with this, check this out. <laughs> this was fun. So our sister, all I did was zoom up, okay? So the last video, me with my my <laughs> my uh, inability to spell always correctly or always being in a rush when I'm typing, made a mistake that I never caught. And it's awesome. <laughs> I had no idea, okay? Remember I was telling you guys three third thrice, right? This last video. The reason I went with that with that uh, name for the video was of course what it was revealing, but it was talking about Job 33, as we shared. And it was oftentimes that the Lord comes twice and three times. See, three third thrice. And that's where I got the idea for the video. And it was perfect for the video. And this is the Father encompassing all, the Son, and the Spirit. <coughs> Three distinct but working as one, you see? Well, like I, like I said earlier, 
this three third thrice, if you do three and three is six, so it's three, six, and if you take the three and the six, you have nine. So it would be three, six, nine. Remember I told you it's like the key to the universe? It's what uh, Tesla had said. If you only knew the magnific magnificence of three, six, and nine, then you would have a key to the universe. That to me, until recently, until the last couple of days, made no sense to me. I am no mathematician. It did whatever that means. I have no idea. I watched a video on it after having done this video and realized, oh my goodness, the three third thrice is three six nine, one of the keys to the universe. What did this key to the universe do? It revealed the gospels. It revealed all the open books. The true timing of the end, which is 777, we're just in the, in the quote-unquote fast-passing years. It brought us all the way back to the creation that showed us the spirit portion, the son portion, and the father portion. 333 three, three, or 333 three, three in reverse. And together, 369. So three for this one. Then three with this one on top of this one is six. And then these two with the father, three, six, nine. And the story's over. The end of days. And look at what it says. Father, son, Holy Ghost. During the millennial reign, brothers and sisters, what happens? All three of them. And the baptism becomes no longer of just in Jesus' name for the remission of sins and the receiving of the Holy Ghost. You see why? Because of the period of time, it's for the world, right? So it's the spirit within those for the world. And then when it's all over and the Father's time is done over Judah and it's the millennial reign, the baptisms will take place in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Guys, the, the, a, a key, not the key, a key to the universe. It is the universe. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Craziness. Well, <clears throat> there's more to this because, uh, oh, did I bring it up? Like I said, I had lost that link. The I had lost the piece. Oh, here, give me a sec. Watch this. So check this out. I went and uh, found the page I wanted to show you guys. Check this out. This is what our sister uh, Petra <laughs> sent me a private message after to let me know that I had done a typo. So the title is fine. And usually what I'll do is, is I'll copy and paste the title onto when I do this, when I do the, the titles on the, on the images, on the thumbnail. But sometimes I don't and I just type it out. Well, I didn't pay attention when I was typing it out and look at what I did. Three third trice. I forgot the H. So I forgot the H in the third one. I'm like, oh, I was thinking maybe I'd have to go back and, and re and redo it because I made a mistake there when she showed me. But she said, go and look at the meaning. Guys, this is one of those things that you would call a a God moment. Um not done on purpose, didn't even realize it. It was brought to my attention. I was going to change it, but she said, go and look at the meaning of trice, which I thought was thrice, but without the H. Are you ready for this? <laughs> thrice. Let's listen. Trice. Oh, there you go. See, not thrice, trice. Here's the definition. A very short time as the time it takes the eye to blink or the heart to beat. What? <laughs> what? To hoist up or in a lash or secure with a rope. <laughs> Guys, it, the definition of trice means a very short period of time, like the blink of an eye. <laughs> what? <laughs> Craziness. This is the type of thing, right, guys? It just keeps happening to us. And <clears throat> now I'm going to show you this other one here in the forum. So this is the forum. Like I said, there's like 900 people in here. And I reposted uh, what our sister, Chantal Boulanger, uh, what she had said about a dream that she had. And so <clears throat> here's what I wrote. 
I said, I had to repost it. So exciting. What a great confirmation. And to me, what makes it even better was that it wasn't understood until she shared it with us. Our sister, Chantal Boulanger, had her first prophetic dream. It was simple and perfect. Now, here's the thing, guys. What I also found awesome or fascinating was the fact that she understood that it was a prophetic dream, yet she didn't understand what the dream meant. You see how awesome that is? It's because the spirit within her, she recognized that it related to what she had prayed and asked for, and she knew enough to understand it was prophetic, but didn't understand what it was. And when she shared it with us, oh my goodness, I just about fell out of my chair. Watch this. This is what this was her dream. This is it right here. Last night, I had a dream. I've never had a prophetic dream in my life, even though I asked many times for one. Yesterday, I asked for one that would give me a clue about the time we have left on this earth. That was her request to the Lord. And she finally got her request answered. She says, last night, I dreamed I was baking loaves of bread. Two loaves. This is copy and pasted directly as she wrote it. Last night, I dreamed I was baking loaves of bread. Two loaves. When I woke up, I was then wondering if it meant two days, two weeks, or two months, or a date concerning twos. That's it. End. So you can imagine within this ministry, we understood what it was right away. Right? This was a picture that I took from Google images with two loaves of bread. Do you think it's just some random picture? No, I typed in, this is what I typed in. I typed in, you guys already know what I typed in, right? I typed in the Feast of Weeks, brothers and sisters. The Feast of Weeks is what I typed in. Why does it matter? Because here it is right here. <coughs> It start in verse 15. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. We've shared this, right? We've shared what this was about. I believe the true count to the Feast of Weeks is the 15th of Savan, not the 6th of Savan, because they're to count Sabbaths not just their random every Saturday Sabbath, but true Sabbaths. And this is the true Feast of Weeks, which then begins what? The true 50 days, which is the beginning of the end of days count before the 14 years begin. And listen to what it says. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall you number 50 days. So now when those seven Sabbaths are over, from the next day, you begin to number 50 days, plural, not the 50th day. This is what we've been talking about a lot, right? Now you count 50 days, evening to evening. So now you're numbering 50 days. <clears throat> and listen to what it says. And you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You shall bring out of your habitations, here it is, two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. The so you know it's Gentiles. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Brothers and sisters, it was the, whoops. It was the, come on now. Two loaves of bread. And in her dream, knowing it was prophetic, had no idea that the two loaves represented what she's been understanding and what was being taught here for the last few uh, couple months or so was the Feast of Weeks. This is the Feast of Weeks, guys. And so you see what this brings about again. It brings about that thought of saying, okay, is this where the bride is brought in, you see? Because we know this point right here, in this period of time right here, 
would be the time that the Lord is going to be meeting with his modern day apostles, whoever, however, that might play out. And then it would be, and maybe it's then he leaves and he goes to the wedding, he returns, and then he's meeting, <coughs> or the, 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 the workers, the seals workers, will be the ones that will begin to follow him as he begins his 40 days as the Son of Man. Just as the Messiah at the beginning of the year. When? When is that going to take place? After the escape happened of the 144 million, after the population of 8 billion was reached, that the end of days could begin. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> so how about that? The word thrice. The word thrice in the blink of an eye. <laughs> I couldn't have made that up. I had no idea. And then we have a confirmation like this. Man, I love it. It is so, so exciting. Now let me bring it to this final piece that I want to get into and go into some greater details here in Scripture, but begin it with, let me close this off, but begin it with, um, and I'm going to close this off, but I'm going to begin it with something that I was telling you guys in the last video that I would do, uh, that sorry, that I wanted to bring up, and that was something that our, that our brother uh, Mark, <coughs> excuse me, wanted me to get into to share again. And it works out perfectly. I, I love how the spirit works. I didn't get to it in the last video. And in this video, it's going to be a perfect lead in to the time frame I want to share with you guys. And <clears throat> that is, we talked about this portion here a lot with, uh, oh, did I go too far again? I did. We talked about this stone's throw. Okay. But now we're going to go a little bit past the stone's throw. <coughs> Excuse me. We saw that, um, of course, he goes to the mountain. They're there. They're a stone's throw away, right? We know this relates to 619 or 614 to 619, right? The uh, the timing of, of the stone's throw and, and the Lord coming. And uh, uh, Luke chapter 21, right? 25 through 28. And then he says in, uh, in Luke 22, starting in verse 42. Uh, uh, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, um, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Okay? He found them sleeping because they were just, they were so sad and, and in pain seeing what he was going through, and they ended up falling asleep. But listen to what he says to them. He doesn't give them a, <coughs> a really bad rebuke or anything like that. Listen to what he says. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. That's it. This is what he gives this group in Luke. Just like many other things, he, there's, there's, there's no rebuke that takes place with the Luke group. They are the ready, watching, the light within, shining throughout the earth. Okay? He's not, he's, he doesn't give these guys rebukes. <clears throat> Even in the story of the, uh, of the woman who had seven husbands, you read it in Luke, there is no rebuke. But you read it in Mark and you read it in Matthew, man, he tells them that's because you guys don't know the scriptures. That's what he tells them. He tells that to the Mark group and he tells it to the Matthew group. Ah, oh, you guys err and you don't know your scriptures. And that's talking to the world of the church and it's talking to the house of Judah, to the Jews. And we know, of course, because they, they've missed out on the, on the, on the uh, New Testament, right? <coughs> so now, when we see this, there's nothing. Just 
rise and pray don't get caught and end up falling into temptation all right we're not looking at this specifically as as um as the apostles and this the apostles when he comes back before the the 50 uh, uh, before the 40 days we're not looking at it like that we're just looking at it in relation to the group of luke compared to the group of mark and the group of matthew so we're looking at it as a conversation to the bride compared to the conversation of the sleeping church left behind compared to the conversation of judah and it's to remind us that you know to to not not go back not not turn and fall asleep like we talked about at the beginning but to be ready to be watching to always be diligent in his word yes we have work to do yes there are things that have to be done throughout the day but within it we're always remembering to keep an eye out right we're always spending a little time throughout the day in his word or at the end of the day <clears throat> we're we're in prayer when we can we give thanks when we can Okay, we are diligently seeking him always. This is what's going on with this Luke group and why there's no rebuke. Look what happens though when you get to the Mark group. When we go to Mark, <clears throat> we see that, where are we? Right here. In Mark uh, chapter 14, in verse 36 it's the he's crying out to father and in verse 37 he says and he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto peter simon sleepest thou could thou not watch one hour <clears throat> now what's the relation here brothers and sisters the relation here is in when he's coming at the end of the six years of seals right this is when he's coming at the end of the six years of seals because we know this is the story of what the crucifixion to the resurrection okay there it comes the betrayal and his arrest so <clears throat> he tells them could you not watch one hour and he goes on to tell them i'm going to get into this one hour in a moment he goes on to tell them, watch ye and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist that they, uh, neither wist they, that uh what to answer him so they didn't know what to answer him and he cometh the third time and he says unto them sleep on now and take your rest it is enough the hour is come behold the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners <coughs> none of this conversation takes place with luke's group but what do we find he he's telling them look your spirit is ready but your flesh is weak who's he talking to he's talking to the to the seals group he's talking to the sleeping church there's their spirit might be ready but they're too caught up in the things of the world they're too caught up in wanting to go here and do this and oh no no the lord can't be coming yet uh, i gotta see my grandkids grow up there are too many that just aren't watching they aren't ready and understanding the season and time that they're in <clears throat> and we'll talk more about why i believe it's one hour not only in the relation like what we're talking about right here is the relation to the to the entire group of the sleeping church that they're not ready that they're the, the, they've got weakness within their flesh even though their spirit might be ready they're just not ready to go and it's why they're being left behind but then we also know there's this is to come portion which relates to the end of seals which is the end of the mark portion right and that we're going to talk about this in a moment in relation to the one hour <clears throat> when we come to matthew and we go to matthew chapter 26 we're going to go to the same conversation and we see he says listen to this this is so awesome we'll start in verse uh 
Marcellus is, uh, oh, let's go to verse, start in verse 38. Matthew 26, verse 38. You're going to see the difference again, and it's awesome. Then says he unto me, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, if it be possible, will your cup pass? Nevertheless, it be your will. Verse 40. Then he cometh unto his disciples and findeth Peter asleep and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? And watch, watch and pray, lest you enter not, uh, sorry, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And it goes on saying the second and the third time for them as well. Now listen to this. We know again that this is, this is the same typology that when we go to the um, crucifixion story in Luke, Mark, and Matthew, we see that when Christ is crucified in Mark and in Matthew, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is part of that intro video, right? It means to leave me behind. So with Mark and with Matthew, he says, my God, my God, why have you left me behind? This is what they're going to be screaming at the escape and tribulation beginning. The, the sleeping church and Judah, they're going to be saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me behind? But he, as we know, he doesn't say that with the Luke group. You see, it's never condemning to the Luke group. <coughs> and we see that, he, that when he's there on the cross, he cries out and he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. So we can see these different groups. The Luke group is gone. The Luke group doesn't have this condemnation against them. They were watching. Yes, they fell asleep, but because the agony, you know, it's not a, it's not a painful sleep. It's not a, it's not a bad sleep. It's not a just because they were tired sleep because they were, they were caught up and their flesh was weak and they were just busy in the world. But it was this agonizing like us, you know, like you can just, oh, Lord, please. And we're watching and we're seeking and we're praying and we're, we're sharing with people. And we're doing what we can. And that's why we sometimes sleep. <coughs> but when we wake up and when we rise, like he said, we're watching to not enter into this temptation. We're, we're aware. We're diligently seeking. But to the Mark and the Matthew group, they're going to be left behind. Because their flesh wasn't ready. They were still weak, even though the spirit it was ready. They weren't ready. And now check this out. When we go back into the story <clears throat> and we take it to the next step and we say, okay, we're not looking now. We're not looking with the eyes of the is in relation to these groups. We're looking at now Mark being the end of seals when the Lord's coming at the end of seals. Okay. He's coming at the end of seals. It's this portion of time of the end of seals. And in Matthew, it's when he comes at the end of the sixth year of trumpets time. All right. That's the time that it's talking about. That's what we're looking now in the is to come. And look at what it says with Mark's group. Could thou not watch one hour? Well, what if we go to, <coughs> excuse me, the book of Revelation. And we see the Lord's coming at the end of the sixth seal which is the end of the first six years of seals. And we know the seventh year relates to the 144 seal, the rapture of the church, and then the seventh seal. I've told you guys in the past that the seventh seal says in chapter eight, Revelation eight, verse one, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I've told you guys before, I believe that half an hour relates to about six months. Or you see, because it says about the space of half an hour, I believe it means it's about six months, maybe five, maybe seven, you know, somewhere between five and seven months. 
And one of the ways you can understand it is by the fact that the sixth seal, once it was over, you have these events of chapter seven taking place, which I believe take place during the other portion of the about half an hour, which means this would be the portion of the seventh year while the Lord is here. So if half an hour or about half an hour means about six months, which would then mean that Revelation 7 and the events in it are about the first six months, one being about five months, the other one being about seven months, then when we look at Mark and we see that he says, hey, could you not watch one hour? What do you think that means in the end of days, in the end time eyes understanding? It would mean one year. Could you not watch one year? You saw the events, you saw everything that was taking place, and you couldn't watch for one year? You fell asleep? <clears throat> I believe this is the portion that it's talking about, to the end of the seventh seal. Right? What if we look at it with um, Second Ezra, for example? Okay? He comes down on Mount Zion. Um, which is made manifest, prepared, and built. This is when he comes at the end of the sixth seal. The Lord is coming at the end of the sixth seal with that mountain carved without hand, prepared and built, like he said in, in, uh, in John chapter 14, that he's going to go and build mansions for these people. And then what happens? All the nations that were against, they all come to fight against them, right? And he ends up destroying them. These are also things taking place during that seventh year. And when it's over, look at what it says. And as for you seeing him gather to himself another multitude that was peaceable, these are the ten tribes which were led away from their land during the time of captivity of King Hosea and Shulamanser, the king of the Assyrians. This is, of course, the rapture group of the great multitude. But you could see what happened first. So it's almost like, like the this this group working wasn't they they, they weren't ready or let's say the the hundred forty four thousand maybe that they're saying look or even maybe the the whole group the whole rapture group you see they they were still sleeping <clears throat> there was an issue with them not being ready for one hour one year and he's trying to say hey. What's going on now? Is it relating to the whole group of the sleeping church? Or is it relating to, to the workers that were helping bring them in? 144 or the SEALs workers? I sure don't think it was the SEALs workers because these guys were aware the whole way through. So it might relate to the 144. But you see, because we know the 144, when the year is over, they're the ones now there with the Lord. They're, they helped bring in the rapture group, but then there's this period of what I've called peace. So do they, do they, are they sleeping? You know, are, are they just not prepared when it's time to, to, for trumpets to begin and that period of time to start? You see, we, we have little types of shadows of this too, don't we? Because we know when the Lord comes in relation to the resurrection, that he gives, um, he, he's upset with this relation of those that are the type and shadow of the 144, which is the end of Mark at the resurrection, and he unbraids on them because they didn't believe the testimony of the two worker groups that were there during seals. So it could very well be that it relates to the 144. You know, they were sealed, they did their work, but then there was this quiet time because it's the peace. And this is a question that I had earlier and that I've had recently. <clears throat> How do you know? How can you show scripturally that when the Son of Man comes at the end of seals or the end of the sixth seal, and by middish seventh year, at that seventh seal is when he makes peace with the nations? Okay, we're going to talk about that. I'm going to we'll circle back to this in a moment, but let me show you now with Matthew, and then we'll circle back because look at what he says to here uh, with Matthew's group. In Matthew's group, he says uh, to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? 
with me. The other one, first of all, of course, Luke has nothing against them. Mark, he said, could you not watch one hour, but not with them? Why not with them? Because the Lord hasn't been revealed to the whole earth yet. It's not until he comes at the end of the sixth trumpet. Remember that? It's not until he comes to the at the end, feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end of 13 or the start of the beginning of the beginning of the 14th year. Same thing, right? Very end of 13, very beginning of 14th is when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives. So when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives and the whole world can see him, what's going to happen? Well, he's got to fight just like the Daniel, right? That final year, he brings the struck. He, he fights against all those who came against Jerusalem. We know in Zechariah 14, the, the incredible war and battle that takes place as the second sword. And so what ends up happening? He's here. The whole world knows he's here. And look at what he tells this group. What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Because in that one hour, which is that final year of trumpets, he was there with them. The whole world knew he was there. You see how crazy that is? Because why? It's six years and the seventh year of land rest, right? Six years and the seventh year. That's the way it plays out. Let me show you something. I even have this drawn up here. <coughs> I did this a while ago, but all the charts, guys, just so you guys know, the charts are updated. Okay. So with the, the timing of the years, okay, they've been updated. So you guys can download them in the description box under this video or even under some of the other recent videos. So you can even see some of them. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's okay that it's over there. So even the wordings and the things like that, they were updated for the adjustment of the year. But this is the way I see it playing out. We got the 50 days of the Son of Man we know. Or sorry, the 50 days that come first. It's either wedding week and then 40 days and then Holy Ghost at the 50th. And then we have... Two and a half years of seals, three and a half years of seals to the end of the six years. This is the 42 months. This is the beginning of the 14 years. It's World War III. Uh, it's all the craziness that breaks out until Antichrist gets his power to continue 42 months. When he gets his power to continue 42 months, three and a half years, it will take us to the end of two and a half and three and a half, six years of seals. And what happens? We see at the end of the sixth seal, the Lord is coming on heavenly Mount Zion. Okay, so it's two and a half, three and a half, one. And then trumpets, he's now starting his three and a half years of Messiah being here, where he's rebuilding the temple, the city and the streets, right? Everything was given unto him. He defeated them and he made peace with the nations after that battle when he came at the end of the sixth seal. At the end of the sixth year, okay, when he came in this year. This is that year of Mark that I was telling you about. And then here we are in trumpets. It'll play out as three and a half. Then he's cut off two and a half years of Satan's reign, which will be the sixth year of trumpets. And then the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, defeats all of them. Satan's bound for a thousand years, and it's all over. This is that Matthew, when he's ye here. And the whole world will have seen him. And hence he says, could you not watch one year with me? Over here, the whole world didn't know. So he doesn't say with me. He just says that one hour. This is the, the quickest little glimpse you can get at the revelation of the end of days in the timings of years and how it plays out. <coughs> so I wanted to share that because I thought this was really interesting when we see this, and I talked about this, I think probably over three years ago was the last time we touched on this, right? And watching with me one hour. And why I was bringing it up now was because when our brother Mark was sharing about it, it was to make sure we're watching, guys. In, in the now, not looking in the is to come that I was just talking about, but in the first portion, in how we were talking about it in the is. Let's not, let, let's not be caught sleeping and him saying what? Your spirit was ready, but your flesh was weak. Why would the flesh be weak now? Drunkenness? Right? 
getting caught up in the things of the world and and putting God to the side? You see, remember, remember, there's going to be almost 1.5 billion people of which only 10%, which will equal 1.8% of the earth that are going first. It's not because the others don't say they believe in Jesus, but it's because they weren't ready and watching. Their flesh was weak. They were caught up in the things of this world. Not aware of the season and time. And fell to the weaknesses of the flesh and of that, that's within the world. This is the point. So we had a little duality, a, a little double piece going on in here with how in the now keep watching, guys. Keep watch, keep praying. Don't get caught up in the things of this world and allow your flesh to be weak. But be strengthened and on watch, always ready. Especially in this ministry, man, this is what we do. It's the revelation of the end of days. For the last four years, it's close. It's been close in all of the last 6,000 years to, to be within the last four years in the ministry being given these keys to open up all these all these books. Man, that's not a lot of time to open up everything we've been given. All right. <laughs> so now, when we come back to this Mark one, watch this. Let's look at this again in this, um, whoops. Where am I? In this, uh, in this is to come, okay? So we've got this one hour, it says. And we share this in relation to Christ coming at the end of the sixth seal. Oh, things are running a little slow. Let's go to the end of the sixth seal. We come to the end of the sixth seal, and we know that it relates to the portion of time of the end of six years of seals. It doesn't mean one seal per year. That's not how it works. There's going to be overlapping and everything. But by the time the six years of seals portion are done, okay, it'll, or sorry, by the time the six seals are over and the Lord is coming down on heavenly Mount Zion, it will be six years that will have completed. And we see, of course, that it says in verse 16 and 17, it says, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall abide and who shall be able to stand. So what is this period of time? This relates to the end of six years, right? So if we went to the chart, we could probably find something within the six years within these open chapters to years. So watch this. <clears throat> Let's go to Zechariah chapter six and watch some incredible wording for you guys. Okay, 14 chapters, chapter six could, and this is what we've said in the past. When you read a chapter and you're finding the nuggets that relate to the years within it, sometimes it could relate to the beginning of the year, Sometimes it could be the middle of the year. Sometimes it could relate to something right near the end of the year. Sometimes it can encompass the whole thing within the wording of the chapter. That's giving us the understanding of the end of days. Okay, so when we're looking at this one with Zechariah, you're going to see exactly where it relates. It's relating to him coming at the end of the six years of seals. And we know this because I just showed it to you at the end of the sixth year of seals, it's the sixth seal. <clears throat> Listen to what it says. Starting in Zechariah 6, starting in verse 10. Take of them of the captivity. Okay, meaning there was a group in captivity. Take of them of the captivity, even Helde, and look at, look at the definitions, worldliness. So take of those of the captivity of the world. Remember this? Look at 2nd Esdras. Who's coming? The 10 tribes. We know it's the tribes, the house of Israel, mixed in with the Gentiles, which are called the world. You see? Which are called the world. And where were they? They were in captivity during the days of Hosea, during the time of the Assyrian. 
same timing okay um of tobje which is goodness of god so those of worldliness with the goodness of god uh who god has known which are come from babylon and come thou the same day and go to the house of josiah <coughs> the son of zilfne i always mess up these names sorry then take silver and gold and make crowns and set them upon the head of joshua of course yeshua the son of Josdek, which is jehovah righted so god's right hand the high priest okay so first of all there's where we're getting this nugget him as high priest <clears throat> then it says remember this is the end of the six seal timing speak unto him saying thus speaketh the lord of hosts saying behold the man whose name is the branch this is christ obviously guys we all know it right we've heard this before even through other teachings we know this is christ this is what the jews even talk about they know and this is what i was telling you guys at the beginning the jews know that when christ is coming he is coming as king and high priest in a time where he will declare this peace okay <clears throat> so behold the man whose name is the branch he shall grow up out of this place and he shall build the temple of the lord hello how many times have we proven this out without even remembering to go into a he's uh zachariah 6 all this time even he shall build the temple of the lord and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne and he shall be a priest upon his throne and the council there it is and the council of peace and the council of peace shall be between them both verse 15 and they that are far off <laughs> shall come and build the temple shall come and build the temple of the lord and you shall know that the lord of hosts has sent me unto you and this shall come to pass if they will diligently obey the voice of the lord your god <laughs> how much more clear does this need to be <clears throat> when the son of man comes they're going to, he's going to rebuild the temple he's going to sit on it on the throne and rule from it and his council will be as high priest at in the time within council of peace as high priest does that sound familiar to anybody it certainly should right because remember when we go to Daniel 7? <coughs> Watch this. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, which is what? After the first beast, the second beast, the third beast, and the fourth beast being the time of the Antichrist. When his time comes to an end, what is it? It's the end of the sixth seal. Right? It's again, it's still saying it's the end of the sixth seal. The Antichrist 42 months come to an end. It's the end of the six years when the Son of Man is showing up again. Or when the Son of Man is showing up. And we know that there's the Ancient of Days with him. Just like chapter uh, uh, the end of the sixth seal said. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands, there they are, ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. This is the Gentile bride standing before him, guys. 
This is the 10,000 times 10,000 in the pre-trib that were taken. Just like Luke 21 said at the end, watch and pray always that we may be accounted worthy to what? To stand before the Son of Man. <coughs> and it says, the judgment was set and the books were opened. Verse 11, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld till the beast was slain and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, remember this, we're going to come back to this. Uh, we're going to show another piece that relates directly to this. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Which means what? This is that battle. This is that battle at the end of the sixth seal. The Lord coming on Mount Zion, the place prepared and built. And then what? Then you see a whole bunch wanting to come against them, right? And an innumerable multitude gathered together as you saw desiring to come to conquer them. This is what takes place. There's a whole bunch of people freaking out, but there's a whole bunch of people that think, oh, what is this coming? And they want to destroy and they want to attack it, right? This is the first battle that the Lord has. This is at the end of seals or at the end of the sixth year of seals and the whole world doesn't get to see him here. This is when he comes in the clouds for Mark chapter, Mark, Mark's discourse. Okay, this is when he comes at the end of the six years of seals. And listen to what it says. I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with, listen to this, with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And to finish up that part that relates to the other piece, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom, which shall not be destroyed. Look at this word. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Look at the word with. <clears throat> Check it out. In nothing about on one of the definitions, there's a, over a thousand, all right? None of them is on, it is in. In what? In a cloud? No, nope. in clouds plural. So it's in clouds plural at the end of the six years of seals when the Son of Man is coming and the Ancient of Days is with them. The Antichrist is killed because his 42 months are up. And it's in the clouds. Well, you guys remember this, right? Because it's Mark's discourse. Not Luke's that said in a cloud, singular. It's the Mark discourse when he's coming at the end of seals. And it says, and they shall see him. Uh, uh, and then shall they see the son of man coming in, which means in the clouds, plural. <clears throat> remember we go to matthew's discourse for those that are newer and the word in doesn't actually mean in because this is when he's coming at the end of the sixth trumpet and listen to what it says and then shall they see the son of man coming in but the word actually means on the clouds so when we come to daniel chapter 7 and we want to understand what when this is talking about we can understand it because we know the differences of who the Gospels are speaking to, which reveals to us when the portions of time are. That we can go to the Old Testament and we can literally see when the Son of Man is coming, when the Ancient of Days comes as well. The Son of Man is brought before him in the clouds. So is the whole world going to see him here? No. Only those who were ready and watching at that time. Well, it gets better because this is all going to relate to that portion of peace as well. Don't forget what happens in Daniel chapter 9. Don't, and we're going to come back to this. You see, only the Antichrist was killed. Yes, there were many people in the battle that were killed. 
but out of the leaders the global leaders only the antichrist was killed the rest of them had all of their belongings everything all of their dominion i should say taken away but their lives were prolonged you're going to see we're going to talk about this in a moment you're going to see another piece of scripture i'd never seen this before that directly relates to what this says right here but we know that it has to relate to a time of what when the son of man comes at the end of seals when messiah comes at the end of seals it has to relate to that same time and and what did we see in zechariah chapter 6 that it also relates to when he is peace and high priest well we know the one who's priest and high uh, who is king who is high priest at a time of, with peace is melchizedek so remember that when we remember again that these guys are going to have their dominion taken away but their time will still be prolonged so we can see this is only the time of the end of the sixth year of seals. When we come now to Daniel chapter nine, and we're reading all these things now that we've been reading, and we see that as we've taught, when the seven years of seals come to an end, and then it's going to be the rebuilding at the start of trumpets, see what happens. Then the beginning of trumpets, it's, which is about three and a half years, they're going to build, rebuild the street, uh, shall be built again, and wall, even in troublous times. And after these about three and a half years, shall Messiah be cut off. This is precisely what we show. Why is Messiah going to be cut off? It's going to be about three and a half years where they're rebuilding the city and the streets and the temple just like we were told in Zechariah 6 that the branch was going to be there and overseeing this rebuilding take place. It'll last for three and a half years before Satan's battle in heaven is lost and he's cast down to the earth. Then Messiah is cut off. So again, we're finding more evidence like we needed it, right? We're finding even more scriptural proof that it's Messiah the branch who is here who is overseeing the rebuilding of the city the streets and the temple just as we've been teaching watch this let's go to psalms 110 we talked about it not too long ago but we're going to show greater detail remember this psalms 110 starting in verse 1 it's a short chapter right seven verses the lord said unto my lord Okay, this is Father God to Jesus, Messiah. Sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Verse 4, the Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Listen to this. <coughs> verse 6, Psalms 110, verse 6. Right? The day of his wrath is about to start. It's the end of the sixth seal. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. Why is there dead bodies? The end of the sixth seal, he's coming on Mount Zion. An innumerable multitude is going to come to conquer him. But then, when all these dead bodies, when all this killing takes place, out of all the leadership of kings and leaders of the earth, only the Antichrist is killed. And what did Daniel 7 tell us? That the rest had their dominions taken away and their life prolonged for a season and time. Listen to this. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with, de with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads of many countries. Bet you never saw that one before. And if you did, certainly not in the context of understanding, 
in relation to the end of days, this is precisely Daniel chapter 7. Antichrist had his time. It was the six years of seals. He reigned for his 42 months as the Antichrist when he took over after the two and a half years. Here is the end of the sixth seal. Hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, which is the Ancient of Days. And who is it that brings this judgment against them? The Father. And he kills the Antichrist. But the rest of them, the rest concerning the rest of the beasts, the rest of the leaders, leaders of these nations, they had their dominion taken away, but their lives were prolonged. See, he wounded them, but did not kill them. And then Christ, there he is, coming on the clouds, coming in, I should say, the clouds, and his dominion is being given because the time of trumpets will begin when the rebuilding starts. Isn't that awesome? Look at how awesome that was. Look at all of the connection. When does he sit on the right hand of the Father? In the is to come, the revelation is at the end of seals. It's the end of Mark's discourse, uh, at the end of Mark's gospel. Literally at the end of Mark's gospel. Let me show you. For those that don't know, let's go literally to the end of Mark's gospel. He's talking to the 144,000 is the typology of what happens. And they're to go out, right? And to do their work and everything they have to do. And listen to what he says. He ends in verse 19 with, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Where are we saying Psalms 110 is? We're saying it's directly related to the end of the six years of seals. And where where have we been teaching forever that the, the typology of the end of Mark is? The end of the six years of seals. (laughs) <laughs> so awesome, right? And so we know that he's now going to rule in the midst of his enemy of, of thine enemies. We know he's the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Well, <laughs> when we went to Zechariah chapter 6, we were told that the branch that was going to be rebuilding the temple and be the one to sit and bear the throne and to, to the glory and shall sit and rule on the throne is going to be the priest and the council of peace. Who is the one who is a priest, who is a ruling king with peace? Well, I showed you that the peace is the thing that's going to be declared at the seventh seal. The seventh seal is going to be the peace. And we know that he makes it with nations. Okay, watch this. We say, well, okay, we just saw that it also related to the order of Melchizedek because Christ is the Melchizedek priest and king, which was also peace. Well, remember, this is what I was telling you guys earlier about the Jews. The Jews know that these things in Christ have not been fulfilled that they were promised. Where is this victorious leader who defeated the enemies of Israel, who came as king and high priest and rebuilt the temple? Do you get it? Because Christ came the first time for the world. And when he comes to complete seals, He's finishing up the portion for the world, for the house of Israel that the Gentiles were all grafted into. And it's going to then turn back to the beginning, which was the promise, which was for the house of Judah. And when he comes as high priest and king, when he comes bringing peace and the rebuilding of the temple, if this is exactly what the Jews have been taught for centuries and yet the church and the christians run around and we've been saying no 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 they've already missed christ they missed him they're going to fall for the antichrist it's not true it is not true 
This is how powerful what we've been given is. And why all I want to do is just reach as many people with a voice that will help share it with others. But I understand it's not easy to take in for somebody who's suddenly coming in at a time when they've understood seven years all their life. And to take all of this in, that's why we say start with the intros. Go read the first couple, three chapters of the book and grasp it. See, this is what the Jews are waiting for, for their Messiah. The Messianic era will be ushered in by a Jewish leader generally referred to as Mashiach or Messiah, the anointed one. See, just like Daniel 9, a righteous Zion of King David, he will rebuild the holy temple in Jerusalem and gather the Jewish people from all four corners into the promised land. That's exactly what is about to happen at the end of the sixth seal in that seventh year. And into and, and, and the beginning of trumpets. This is precisely what we show is going to begin when he comes here and he becomes this victorious leader. He becomes Melchizedek type, having defeated them, then being given his throne, the crown, and overseeing the rebuilding that will take place over the next three and a half years of trumpets. While the Antichrist is killed, and all the other leaders have been wounded and had their dominions taken away. He is the one that will be the man that brings about the peace as king and high priest. See, this is all the same thing. You can find all of this stuff. <clears throat> all of these things, man, go, go look into it. And so, as we look at the timing of these things and we look at our chapters to years, it's no difference with Genesis, right? There he is. Genesis chapter 14, which would be the same seventh year of seals when the Lord comes. What happens? You guys know this. We go to Genesis 14. As I begin to wind this down, we see that this is when Abraham rescues Lot <coughs> in the 14th year. Well, isn't that interesting? In the big picture, it's the 14th year. And he rescues Lot. Remember? He's got to rescue Lot, which is the Luke 17 portion. And so you have Abraham with Lot going now where? Going into the land. Right? They're showing the promised land. Well, guess what? Melchizedek shows up. And who's Melchizedek? He is king of Salem, which is what? Peaceful. He's king of peace. Brought wine and he's what? The high priest of the most high God. He's above Abraham even. He has the, the, the authority over Abraham. That's why Abraham brings him the tithes. The, that portion that goes to the king, I should say. What if we go to Hebrews chapter 7? <coughs> We go into another book, Hebrews chapter 7, another book that was open. Oh, chapter 7. Just like the 14th, we go to Hebrews chapter 7, and what do we find? We find, of course, Melchizedek again showing up for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, which is peace, priest of the Most High God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, to whom Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being the interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. So you want to see, you want to understand where, where peace is coming from? This timing of peace when he comes as Melchizedek, as king and high priest? You see, Melchizedek wasn't from the lineage of, of the Levites. 
because if you're going to be the high priest, you should have been just like just like um, when it talks about here with uh, 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 Aaron. You see, Aaron was the high priest, right? But you have Melchizedek, who is the high priest, and Melchizedek was higher. Yet Melchizedek was from the house of was was from Judah. And this is what Hebrews chapter 7 talks about. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham. Okay? It seems like a contradiction. But it's not. It's because Christ, who is Melchizedek, who was always referred to to be the one as Melchizedek, this is why it has caused so much grief between Christians and Jews. Because the Christians are saying, he is here, this was him. But that's because he came from the world and for the house of Israel. He still has to fulfill a portion of time to bring in the rest that are still blinded. Because they're looking for the conquering king coming as king and high priest. And Christ did not come as that. And they knew that he must come as that. <coughs> You see, they don't have the New Testament, but they got the Old Testament. And it's pretty darn clear. Zechariah is clear. Psalms is clear. And this is why these things unfulfilled about Christ isn't jiving with their understanding. But for those that were meant to see, whose eyes weren't fully blinded, my my best guess is probably they may not have been directly from the line of Judah. From the, from the house of Judah, I should say. They were maybe within their lineage. Maybe they're actually the world. Because you see, Judah, the house of Judah, is waiting for this branch. The one coming in power and authority. This is why it's been so messed up. This is crazy powerful, isn't it? Isn't this incredible to have this discernment, guys? It all goes back. This is why every single time I talk about the Gospels and talk about those intro videos, because every single time, that is the foundation. That is a key that reveals the universe of the Word mind-blowing right we go to Zechariah 8 as I finish up we see Zechariah 8 <clears throat> there's the Lord on holy Mount Zion you guys know this one well right he's now saying let your hands be strong can we just read that people are gonna come from a far country they're all gonna come back and they're gonna start rebuilding because it'll be it'll be the branch it'll be Yeshua who's over it who's overseeing all the rebuilding of what the temple that they're going to build upon the foundation that was laid during seals? You see, during seals is the end of the world portion from when he came the first time. And he's bringing them all in. <coughs> he's bringing his, his creation, his second group, the, the one in the creation of days from Genesis 1. He's bringing them all in. There's no more... There's no more death or, or being cut off or anything like that for this group but when that time is over it is the end of the age for the world it is the end of the gentiles and the foundation will have been laid you see this is why the antichrist remember in this period of time that we're living up in until the lord comes at the end of seals that age is where the body is the temple you see, that is the Mark discourse, right? Standing where it ought not because it's the body. It's something within the body or on the right hand or on the forehead. But when Christ comes and that portion of time is done and dealt with, it will return to the time of Judah. The foundation will have been laid during seals and the rebuilding of the temple will take place at the beginning of trumpets just like 
the chapter to year revelation of the scriptures show us just like the jews are waiting for and expecting that the christians haven't been able to understand because to understand it must mean there's an again coming for the son of man because he's going to be cut off remember so we can see the rebuilding the temple of all this takes place and we know that about three and a half years later satan is cast down and what ends up happening messiah has to cut his covenant that he made he has to break the covenant that he made with all people and he breaks it in that day this was to clarify for people that say well well where's this covenant where's this peace that he made it was what he made at the seventh seal antichrist killed nations leadership wounded and their dominions taken away given then to the lord jesus who made a covenant with all nations but then he's getting cut off it's being cut off because satan's being cast down having lost his battle in heaven in the second heaven and now being cast down to the first heaven to earth and that's why this covenant that was made is being broken in that day brothers and sisters man i pray this blesses you there was there was a lot in this there was so much good stuff in here i i really hope you you dig into it you you grab it and you understand it oh my goodness there was even this <coughs> it was another piece i wanted to mention but uh maybe we'll save it for another one then <clears throat> so man i just can't get past this mid two hour point in videos but you know i'm not doing them quite as as quickly as three days you know i'm waiting till four ish days later now to give you guys some time to watch them uh because they are lengthy but brothers and sisters i know there's a lot in here there's a lot to take in there's a lot to digest there's a lot to seek in and study and watch through and and discern and seek for yourselves so i pray that it blesses you um i pray that you come and join us at ministryrevealed.com and join us in the forum and uh just you know let's keep lifting each other up let's keep digging let's keep searching and uh maybe even one day soon here we'll do another live show and uh maybe i'll see if i can get mike over at uh, interrupts 165 and uh, we can just do a a group as well so with that i love you guys god bless you god bless your families we'll talk to you soon bye for now